What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and after spending a few days with iOS 14.4 Beta 2 and iPadOS 14.4 Beta 2, I wanted to give you guys my follow-up review on the software and talk about some additional new features, the performance, the battery life, the connectivity, and more. We're also gonna go over the community poll and see what you guys had to say about 14.4 Beta 2, and also when we can expect the next software release from Apple. So let's first talk about an additional new feature that I did not mention in my initial What's New video, and that's actually going to be inside of settings, Bluetooth, and then when you go into something like, we'll just say AirPods Max, for example, that doesn't have it right there, but if you don't have something that's AirPods related, you can actually specify what type of device it is. So over here is my iPhone 12 Pro. This is my main daily device right here. And let me show you in this, if I go to my settings here, and then I go to my Bluetooth, and then you can see if I go to my car right here and tap on the I, you can see that we have this right here, device type. You could actually specify what type of Bluetooth device this is. And if you tap on that, you have car stereo, headphone, hearing aid, speaker, or other. And the reason for this is actually explained right down there below. It says specifying the type of device can ensure your headphone audio level measurements are accurate. So if you're inside of your settings and you have sounds and haptics right here, and into a headphone safety. If you have reduced loud sounds enabled, this will actually help reduce the amount of times that your device basically thinks that your car stereo is uh, you know, headphones or something like that. So obviously 95 decibels is of course loud if you're wearing AirPods, but in your car, 95 decibels might not be as loud. So this will basically just help make your readings a lot more accurate, especially inside of the health application. So when you go here and read off your levels, your hearing levels, it'll be a lot more accurate now, now that you can specify the type of device inside of Bluetooth. And again, when you tap on the eye right there. And again, I could do it for the shower speaker right here. You could see it doesn't have to be connected either. I could change this. That's not a headphone, that is a speaker. So I could change it right there. And now it's going to be a lot more accurate. And my device in iOS is going to understand this device type better, especially when it comes to headphone audio levels. So that is a pretty neat new feature here in iOS 14.4. And I think a lot of people are going to benefit from that for sure. So also I did want to mention the handoff. So I did talk about this in my initial what's new video, but the handoff with the HomePod is much improved. I mean, I noticed this right away when I installed iOS 14.4 beta 2 and I mentioned it in that video, but after using it for a couple of days, every single day, it is so much better. I mean, I really have not noticed any issues at all with it. So if I bring my HomePod closer to my iPhone right here, you can see it just opens up right away and we have the song playing right there and everything. And it's just very quick, it's very smooth, and everything works exactly as you would expect it to. And also, let me show you guys a screenshot of what I took earlier. So you can see here, you can also transfer a phone call. So you can see when you're getting a phone call right there, it says transfer from iPhone to the HomePod. And you can see even up top, it shows that we have FaceTime audio, or if that was a phone call, it would show phone right there. And you could just simply tap that and it would transfer the phone call to your HomePod or HomePod mini. So really nice. And I did also mention the alarms right there. That is not new in beta two that was there in beta one as well, but there are a lot of other changes in terms of overall stability improvements. And of course that transfer button right there as well. So definitely some nice improvements for handoff with the HomePod. Now the handoff features are nice, but one thing that I noticed that could be improved is just how often it pops up, even when I'm not super close to the HomePod. So I'm like probably like over a foot away from the HomePod mini right now. And every once in a while, you'll see it pop up right there at the top of the screen. It kind of, you know, gives you some haptic feedback and then goes away and then it does it again in like 10 seconds. So I kind of just wish there was some sort of timeout period when it's that far away. So hopefully Apple adds that in the future and I will be monitoring that to see if that gets addressed. Also in a phone call, the AirPods Max Glyph used to show the old AirPods right there, but now they show the new AirPods Max Glyph in beta two and beta one, it still showed the old ones right there. And then another thing I noticed in 14.4 beta one and beta two, I just didn't mention it in my first video is that the pop-up when you have sleep mode enabled. So if you turn sleep mode on and you do that every night and then you unlock your phone without disabling the alarm, the pop-up now shows up right away that says, you know, do you want to turn your alarm off? We've noticed that you're awake. Do you want to turn your alarm off? So I talked about that, I believe in my 14.3 video, but now in 14.4, it appears like right away instead of waiting like 10 minutes after you've been using the phone. So that's another thing I noticed here in beta one and beta two. I did also want to confirm that in addition to the PS5 controller not being supported with beta two, the Xbox Series X controller is still 
not supported either here in 14.4 beta 2. So hopefully we do get support for those next gen controllers very soon. And when it comes to iPad OS 14.4 beta 2, I did not notice anything at all different from iOS 14.4 beta 2. So every change on the iPhone applies to the iPad and vice versa. And it's the same with the stutter, which is one thing I wanted to talk about with the performance side of things. So performance, the stutter or the you know frame rate drops, whatever you want to call it, have been solved in beta 2. So I had this personally for the first time in forever on my iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12, every device I had a stutter issue. When I would lock the device, unlock it, there'd be a slight stutter with the apps coming in. When I went to the notification center or the control center, I would notice some frame drop or some stutter. But now in beta 2, I've not noticed any type of stutter at all. And a lot of people in the comments also confirm that their stutter is gone as well. So that alone is going to make the performance on beta 2 feel much better than beta one, which is definitely a win. But in terms of just overall raw performance, it's kind of the same as beta one, and it's also the same as like 14.3. However, we did get some nice scores in Geekbench. So as you can see right here, we did get a 1578 and a 3845 on the multi-core, which is pretty solid for the iPhone 12. And I did get you know better Geekbench scores on the 12 Pro from beta one to beta two. So the beta two scores were higher than beta one. And also in my what's new video, I did mention how I had multiple app crashes and I showed you guys that screen recording of the music application crashing. I've not had any app crashes, including music yet on beta two. It's not saying it won't happen, but so far it has not happened. So it just feels better overall than beta one did. Now, when it comes to the battery life, battery life is the same as beta one. So that's unfortunate because I still am not able to make it through an entire day. I use my iPhone 12 Pro here on a daily basis and I do have this on 14.4 beta two and I'm still not able to get through the entire day. It dies, you know, it doesn't die, but it gets down to like 5% late in the day. So it's just, I mean, it gets through most of the day pretty much until I'm about to go to sleep but it doesn't get me quite as far as 14.3 did. I would say there's probably like a, you know, maybe a 45 minute difference, 45 minutes of on-screen time difference from 14.3. So it's definitely a noticeable downgrade in terms of battery life. But of course, this is just a beta. So I'm hoping that it will get better by the time 14.4 releases to the public, which I'm assuming it will because I'm assuming there will be at least two or three more betas here with 14.4. All right, so now let's move on to the community poll. So if you guys go to my channel and then go over to the community tab right here, you will see these polls that I post every time a new software update comes out. And you can see here I said, how has iOS 14.4 beta 2 been for you so far? And leave a comment with the device you're using. So as you can see, 15% of people said that beta 2 is excellent with no annoying bugs and good battery. 6% said good, just some minor bugs. 3% said decent, buggy, and bad battery. And 3% said terrible, extremely buggy, and bad battery drain. And then 73% of people are not on 14.4 beta 2, and I'm assuming they're on 14.3. So 15% of people said excellent, no annoying bugs, which is actually higher than I expected. So anyways, thanks to everybody who voted in this poll. I do appreciate it, and I do read every single comment, and it also helps everybody else understand how the software is going. So let's take a look at some of these comments right here. You can see, first off, I have a pinned comment here asking, is the stutter from beta one fixed for you? And you can see that most people are saying it is in fact gone. People saying I had frame drops before when I switched application, so much better. I'm glad the stutter is gone. Seems to be finally fixed. And you can see some people here still say it persists on the 12 Pro. And you know most people are saying that it is fixed though in beta two, which is a good sign. And it has been fixed for me as well on all devices. I did get a chance to test it on every single device and it has been fixed. So going down further into these comments, you can see here that Zoltan said, unfortunately, he's still having issues. So disappearing notifications in general have to reboot to make them reappear. I've not heard of disappearing notifications before, but if you have, let me know in the comments. Shortcuts are not syncing. Lots of UI glitches. I'm quite fast handed. Keyboard prediction not working with, I believe that's hardware keyboard. So some issues there. I've not faced any of these issues and I really have not seen any of these very widespread. So if you're having these, let me know in a comment down below, but that's a pretty interesting comment there. Some people are saying they still have the lag. I believe that's the same person that said it in the pinned comment up there. Asif here says that it's great on his 10S. Frame drops aren't there for him. As of now, battery slightly better as well. Great videos keep doing more. So I appreciate that. And it's good to hear that the frame drops are gone. And you can see some people here are also 
mentioning they don't know how to get the beta. If you just go to beta.apple.com, that's how you can sign up for the public betas. And of course the public beta is out for 14.4 beta two as well. So if we go down a little bit and look at some of these other comments, so uh, people asking if it's risky to test the beta, it's always, I wouldn't say risky, but you are gonna have some bugs. So it's kind of a risk to put it on your main device if you don't have a backup. I think it's better than beta one, which was terrible. It made me feel like I was using an Android phone with Android KitKat with many bugs and stutter UI. So I wouldn't go that far. Obviously it's just being a little funny there, but I definitely think that the lag was real in beta one. And the fact that we had to you know, use it for so long with that lag was kind of annoying, but thankfully it's been fixed here as well. iPhone 12, they better fix idle battery drain. I'm not having any battery drain on the iPhone 12 here. So let's see, iPhone 10, no issues at all with the beta. So good news, you can see kind of a rundown of people, what devices they're using here. So a lot of iPhone 6s, iPhone 7s, and then here is a nice comment as well. Battery life is great on iPhone 11 and speed wise, it's pretty good for a public release and also Mac OS Big Sur. So this is not a public release. This is 14.4 beta two. So I'm not really sure if he's referring to 14.3 here, but it looks like he's having a good experience here on you know whether that's 14.4 beta two or 14.3. But overall, most people are having a good experience so far on beta two. Every you know once in a while, every maybe one in 10 people are still having issues with stuttering but it seems like issues like that are just never gonna go away for certain people and certain devices. But most people are having a great experience here on 14.4 beta two, which is a good sign. And especially since we're on, what's this build? I believe it ends in a D. So yeah, we have a D at the end of the build number here for beta two. So I would expect a couple more betas and things should definitely get a lot better in terms of overall performance and just the overall lag and stutter. It should be fully fixed for people by the time 14.4 gets released to the public. So. Speaking of 14.4 to the public, let's first talk about when we can expect the next beta and then move on to 14.4 public. And also, could we see a 14.3.1 soon? So as you guys know, iOS 14.4 beta two was released like three weeks after beta one. So that was because of the holidays and everything going on. So it's really hard to say what Apple's gonna do from here. So if they're gonna stick to a one week or a two week cycle. So it's really hard to say when we can expect 14.4, the public release, until we see when beta three is released. So beta two is released on the 13th. So we could see a third beta on either January 20th or January 27th. So it just depends on what Apple sticks to in terms of a one week or a bi-weekly schedule. Now, we could also see a 14.3.1 next week, and that would likely come on either the Monday or the Tuesday. I would guess the Tuesday, the 19th, is when we could see 14.3.1. Now, there aren't any critical issues with iOS 14.3 that I'm aware of, so there is a possibility that we just go straight to 14.4 public and we just don't have a 14.3.1. However, there is going to be a new macOS Big Sur update very soon, likely next week, to address the insanely annoying Bluetooth issues with the M1 Max. I faced this, I talked about this on Twitter, but the M1 Max have some really bad Bluetooth issues and Apple is supposedly going to be releasing a software update soon, as early as next week. And if that happens, I would assume that we would get an iOS release to go along with it. So, we could expect to see that likely on a Tuesday right there, and then maybe get a beta after on the 20th, or maybe it's gonna be next week. So we'll have to wait and see on that. And that of course will determine when we'll see 14.4 final as well. So we'll probably see that sometime in February, but you know whether it's early February or mid February, or even the end of February, depends on how long Apple spends between each beta here. So a lot of unknown right now, but just stay tuned to the channel and I will keep you guys as informed as possible when it comes to these beta and these public iOS releases. But yeah, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.4 beta two. That is my follow-up video on the software. Again, it's pretty much everything the same for the iPad on iPad OS 14.4 beta two. I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty Mobile on that, so I am very familiar with how it's running on these beta versions and it's running perfectly fine. If you guys have anything else to add about 14.4 beta two, let me know down in a comment below. Of course, I'm always all ears for anything new or if you're facing any type of new issue or anything like that, let me know with a comment down below. And if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe for my next iOS update video, which hopefully will be next week. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.